Hey Patent friends, welcome back to another video. So one of the biggest misconceptions and difficulties that I see people having with patents is understanding the important difference between patentability of an invention idea and patent infringement. And it, it is absolutely essential for you to understand the difference between these if you are going to be working in patents, getting patents yourself, and if you're gonna be worrying about whether you infringe on somebody else's patent. because. Patentability versus infringement are completely different analyses. And I'm gonna break those down in this video and give you everything you need to know to understand patentability versus infringement. So stick around, we are starting right now. So for those of you who are new here, my name is Dylan Adams. I'm a patent attorney and author of the best-selling book, Patents Demystified, which is an insider's guide to protecting ideas and inventions used by inventors, entrepreneurs, and startups worldwide, including at top universities like Harvard, Stanford, and MIT. You might also recognize me from my appearance on CNBC's hit show, The Profit, with Marcus Lemonis. So this channel is all about giving you the insider tips and tricks on patents and inventing and entrepreneurship. So if you want more content like that, be sure to hit the subscribe button and click that little bell icon so you get notifications of when new great content comes out. All right, let's go ahead and get right into it. So like I said, patentability versus infringement, it's, it's critical to understand this if you're gonna be working with patents. And so I wanna really break those things down because it's, it's, a, it's a big misconception that folks have and they use those terms uh, incorrectly typically and they don't really understand the analysis you have to do which is completely different um, to determine those things. So for instance, somebody has an invention idea, hey, is that patentable or not? Another issue that people have is they have a product or a product idea, they wanna know whether that infringes on somebody else's patent. And again, those analyses are completely different. So let me break those down for you so you understand the important differences. All right, so let me start with patentability. And patentability has to do with ideas that haven't yet been patented. And the question here is whether the idea is new and non-obvious compared to the prior that already exists out there. So uh, that begs the question, what is prior? So prior can be really any sort of technology disclosure that can be issued patents, but it also can be published patent applications that haven't issued yet, that will never issue, that have gone abandoned. But it can be really, again, any sort of other technology disclosure. It could be scientific papers, it could be blog posts, it could be textbooks, it could be YouTube videos like this. Really anything that discloses technology is considered prior art and is open to, uh, to making your idea not patentable. Now, where does this come up? This is gonna come up when, when you draft and file a non-provisional patent application. Okay, so to, to step back for a second. So the way you start the patent, one way you start the patent process is by filing a non-provisional patent application. Now this is the formal patent application that has all the, the requirements of all the line drawings and has to have this very specific format. It's the expensive uh, patent application that you think of. So you file this non-provisional patent application, it waits in line at the United States Patent and Trademark Office for one to three years before examination begins. And examination is kind of like a negotiation where it's a back and forth between you and the examiner where you're trying to get the broadest claim scope coverage of your invention possible, whereas the examiner has to make sure that what you have claimed is new and non-obvious over the prior art. So what the patent examiner does when it comes up in line, and this is the government, so that's why it takes so long, it, you, you're just waiting in line in this big pile for, for one to three years until the examiner finally you know, comes to the top of his or her pile and examination begins. So the first thing the examiner is gonna do is going to do the, the prior art search. Again, it can, it's typically going to be a search of issued patents and published patent applications, but I, I get rejections based off of YouTube videos and scientific papers and textbooks and even things from the Wayback Machine, um, from you know, old, you know, old uh, publications and things like that. So really, again, any sort of technology disclosure qualifies as prior art. So the examiner is gonna, is gonna look at what you have claimed, is gonna determine is it new and non-obvious over the prior art? So there's two things to unpack there, new and non-obvious. So novelty is, is there one piece of prior art that totally describes what you have claimed? Okay, and a lot of times, you know, it, it's not, there's not gonna be one single thing that totally describes what you have. There's gonna be things that are similar, but your, what you have is gonna be a little bit different. That's where obviousness typically comes in. That's usually the, the rejections that we see and the ones that are most difficult to overcome. So obvious is, obviousness is a question of, is it would it be obvious to a, a person of ordinary skill in the art, that being your average person who works in the field, to combine all known prior art 
to come to your invention. And the way it works practically is, let's say you have an invention that has elements A, B, C, and D, and there's a piece of product that shows elements A and B, and there's another a piece of product that show, shows elements C and D. The examiner would say, well, okay, I have you know A and B here, I have C and D here. If you were to combine these two references, you would come to your invention that has A, B, C, and D, and it would be obvious to combine those things, right? There, it, it's in a similar field of endeavor. So somebody who is an average person working in the field, they it, it would be obvious to them to, to find these things and combine it to come to your invention, to your invention, and that's what an obviousness rejection is. So as far as a response goes, you can do two things. You can, you can amend your claims, which is amending the language of your patent application, and or you can argue against rejections. Hopefully this negotiation with the examiner goes well, and then the examiner is, is convinced that what you have is new and non-obvious over the prior art, and then will allow the case, you pay an issue fee, and then the application will issue as a patent. So that's patentability. Again, it's a question of, is your invention new and non-obvious over the prior art? And this is going to come up during patent examination. You can sort of do an analysis beforehand, and this is something I recommend that you talk to your patent attorney about, is, hey, you know, just sort of given your, your gut feeling and you know, based on what you know about patents and things, would this be patentable, okay? And you can do a bit of analysis beforehand, but really where the rubber hits the road, it's gonna be during the examination process of a non-provisional patent application. Okay, so let's move on to infringement. And again, infringement is a totally different analysis than patentability. So infringement only relates to issued and enforceable patents. Okay, so this is gonna be say somebody else's issued and enforceable patent, and it's gonna be compared to actual products or things being offered for sale. So the basics of a patent are they allow people to exclude others from making, using, selling, offering to sell a product within the bounds of the country where the patent is. So in the United States, they could you know, stop people from doing things within the United States or importing those sort of products into the United States. One important thing to understand about, uh, about infringement is a patent cannot infringe on somebody else's patent. So a, 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 an issued patent or a published patent application could be used as prior art against somebody trying to patent something, but that's not infringement. Okay, so infringement is only relating to, again, issued patents and whether the accused product reads on the claims of the, uh, of the issued and enforceable patent. Okay, so with, with infringement, you have to do a very specific analysis, which is fairly complex and difficult. Um, so what you have to do is you have to go to the claims section of the patent, and I'll leave a, a, a link down below and I'll have it pop up right here that, get, that is a video that talks about what the claims are. But the claims are the meets and bounds of what the protection actually is in the patent. So it's not the drawings, it's not the description. Um, those give you a sense of what may be protected, but it's only that final claim section at the very end of the, uh, of the issued patent that actually tell you what is protected and what's not. So what you have to do is you have to break down the claims into their constituent elements and compare line by line of the claims to the, the accused product. Now, it can be kind of difficult to do sometimes, especially with, with certain products. You, if, let, let's say that you have an issued patent and you're trying to find out if somebody, uh, somebody infringes. For things like a physical product, hey, you may be able to like, put it on your desk and quickly see whether there's, there's infringement or not and whether it reads on the claims of this issued and enforceable patent. But for things, say, like software or say, things that are just on a website, you may not know what's going on functionality-wise behind the scenes or within the black box or on a server or something. So it may be hard to determine whether there's actually infringement of an issued and, and enforceable patent. That's what's called discover, discoverability issues. And that's something we run it into a lot um, when it comes to, uh, to patent litigation is that you know, there, we may, may sus suspect that there's infringement, but you have to ha actually have to be able to prove those things and show that every element of at least one claim of the issued and enforceable patent is actually in this accused product, okay? So that is uh, infringement versus patentability. So if you got any value out of this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel to get more information about patents and startups and entrepreneurship and hit that little bell icon so you get notifications on when new videos come out. Also check out these two videos here, great content as well. Uh, click one, click one, click one please. And uh, yeah, we'll see you again in the next video. Thanks for watching.